Welcome everybody back to the Gamecock Dynasty here on NCAA 14. Unfortunately, we do have to stop our SEC play this week against a non-conference opponent in South Alabama. But before this, we have been on a three-game winning streak. We won a game against Vanderbilt, Kentucky, and the 16th ranked Texas a and Aggies before after we lost in week two to Georgia. So now we have a bit of a break, a bit of a chance to kind of rest after that very long SEC stretch. And now on the first play of the game, Rattler's going to find his favorite target, Juice Wells there for 13 yards as they get an easy first down. Now second and six. This South Alabama team is not one that you want to play around with. Play action pass under pressure. Rattler is sacked and he's going to lose seven yards as you can see there. They are very aggressive on the defensive front. Now third and 13. Rattler wants to go down the middle to Jaheim Bell. Could have been intercepted by Jaden Voisin, but instead he deflects it to the ground and this Gamecock offense gets pushed off the field very quickly early in this first quarter. And now we get to meet the offense. Carter Bradley is the quarterback who's going to hit his man in the flats and that is one of his favorite targets, Lincoln Sefik. But they are not a very pass heavy team they have a very talented running back there Ladanium Webb and you're gonna get to see a chance of him getting the ball a lot today 10 yards on that first run on a HB draw and now a third and one don't be surprised if they pull out some very very unique plays and instead they just make a basic a simple slant route there look easy by Jalen Wayne as he's gonna get a nice 12 yard catch there to get the first down now second and one later on the drive the Jaguars offense Bradley under pressure into the end zone could have been intercepted instead cam smith bats it down third and one now for bradley and company out of the shotgun he's gonna give it to webb no he keeps it himself and he's gonna walk into the end zone untouched brad johnson the only man on that side of the field right there but he is blocked perfectly by the lineman and now the gamecocks trail seven nothing early in this game and they face a third and 10 rattler under pressure wants to hit jaheem bell who's gonna break two tackles across the 50 now 28 yards later jaheem bell falls down after an excellent open field tackle now second and nine rattler got his man deep jaheem bell breaking tackles again 35 yards later he is inside the 20 now second and three inside the 10 rattler to the end zone outside touchdown juice well six yards on the play and that is probably the easiest drive you'll see all season long for this Gamecocks offense as we have a tough schedule ahead of us but right now we are focused on beating this Jaguars team because they are dotting us up DJ Thomas Jones the man with three names is going to make a nice corner route there and now Webb on the next possession or the next drive play he's going to make a nice scamper there on the counter and he's got 14 yards third and six now for the Jaguars final minute of the quarter Bradley out of the shotgun he does have two backs but instead he sends Webb in motion Webb is not open and instead his receiver voice in is going to drop that one so the Jaguars would settle for a field goal here as we have eight seconds in counting, first and ten, Rattler out of the shotgun. He's going to hit Amari on Brown who cuts it up the middle and he is going to use his speed to scamper for that first down. Now the second and three in the second quarter, Rattler out of the shotgun. He's going to take the snap, rolling around, a little bit of pressure, fires back across his body and Xavier Leggett able to make a man miss, cuts it back outside and finally brought down at the five yard line. It went from about a 20 yard gain to a 34-yard gain. Now second and goal. Rattler is going to give it to Lloyd right up the middle. Cuts it back to the left side. He had a man there in front of him, so he had to cut it back. And now trying to seal the deal here on a third and goal. Just give it to Marshawn up the middle. Touchdown, South Carolina. One-yard touchdown run for the Gamecocks there as they take their lead right back. 14-10 to 10 now. 641 in the second quarter as the Jaguars offense gets another crack at it. This time they go to Webb again on the outside zone. He is going to get a nice run there and tack on 15 more by the face mask. So this Jaguars offense is giving this Gamecock defense all kinds of troubles. But now they face a third and 10. Bradley wants to fire down foot and he's got his man. Layering the boom or lowering the boom there is Cam Smith. But Jalen Wayne still able to hold on to the ball. Now third and nine. Bradley out of the shotgun. Wants to throw. Under pressure. Sacked and he fumbles it. Alex Huntley is going to pick it up. And he is quickly brought down 
but the Gamecocks defense able to force a turnover. Now first and 10 on the same very next play. Rattler rolling out of the shotgun. Wants to fire downfield. Got his man, Wells Jr. Breaking free into the five. Down at about the five and a half yard line. Second and goal now. Rattler with four minutes exactly remaining in the second quarter or in the first half. 13 seconds on the play clock. He's going to take the snap. Wants to throw it. Rolling around. Got all kinds of room. And he scampers in from seven yards out. Easy enough there as Spencer Rattler was untouched on that play. And he just easily rolls into the end zone. Now first and 10 for the next Jaguars possession. They're going to keep it on the ground to Webb. And why not? LaDamian Webb continues his strong day. 14 yards more. Second and in inches now. Bradley later on that same drive. Still, he's going to give it to Avery this time. And Terry and Avery not going to get anything. He loses four on the play. We have seen backup running backs be successful against this defense. So that is a positive thing. Now third and nine. Bradley out of the shotgun. Got to probably throw it on this one. Fires to his man Voison, But Devin Voison is going to get cut down there at about a, a yard or two away. He's going to get seven yards credited on the play now second and four Rattler's gonna go to Lloyd Lloyd's gonna make a man miss and he's gonna rush it to the outside they've got about a minute 20 now to work with late in this second quarter third and two give it to Lloyd on the run and just get the first down make the clock stop and seven yards later they are gonna continue their drive now third and inches probably gonna do the same thing here under a minute now give it to Christian Bill Smith and he's got a hole up the middle down past the five to the four yard line 15 yards on that one now first and goal Rattler, hand off to Lloyd, great lead blocking, touchdown. Christian Bill Smith made an amazing block there on the safety, and Marshawn Lloyd just waltzes in to the end zone now as we head into halftime and into the third quarter now, up 28-10. to 10. This Jaguars offense hasn't necessarily been bad, but that screenplay, man, that one was bad. But they just have not been able to... To get any momentum going. Instead this defense has continuously gotten there. When they needed to. Sure they might get a few yards on first down. But on a play like this on third and six. They're going to get nothing but a face mask called. On Marcellus Dial is going to save them. And they have to score on this drive. You feel like in order to stay in this game. At least um, try to stay in this game. Bradley is going to bring a man in motion here on second and eight. And instead he tries to run. Get sacked. Jordan Birch has had a tremendous season so far. But now a third and 15. Can this defense hold? They're going to go with the screenplay. This time to Webb again. He is going to try and break free. But he cannot get away from our man Webb. Now a first and 10 on the next game. Cox possession. Rattler wants to throw to Bell this time on the outside. And he's going to stiff arm a man and drag him. For a couple extra yards. Second and inches now for Rattler and company. CBS back in the backfield. We haven't seen a lot from him this season. But this time he's going to get it. He's got another hole up the middle. Breaking tackles. Two rushes for him. And about 30 yards on the ground so far. He stays in the game now on a first and 10 later on the same drive. Rattler counting down the clock in this third quarter. He's going to fire to Jaheim Bell. Wide open, 12 yards, touchdown as he continues his streak. Didn't have a touchdown through the first two weeks of the season, but now he has had a touchdown in the last three games, and Jalen Wayne makes a great catch there. 16 yards in that one, and that was very heavily contested. What a nice throw by Carter Bradley. Three minutes now in this third quarter remains. Bradley going to fire outside to Wayne again as he tiptoes on the sideline. They're going to give him his feet down. And they're going to give them that first down. Now two minutes remain. First and quarter. Bradley going to give it to Avery who just cannot get anything going on the ground. The Damian Webb has been dominant. Terry and Avery, not so much. Third and 14 now for this Jaguars offense. Out of the shotgun. Bradley wants to throw across the middle. Jalen Wayne makes a catch in between two defenders. But he is just going to fall well short of that first down marker. So the Jaguars settle for a short field goal. Again, doesn't really help them much in this situation. But they still are able to get on the board for the first time since, what, the first quarter maybe. So now we get to see the backups in this game. Luke Doty on a third and 10 is just going to fire to Jalen Brooks. They actually lose a yard there, um, but that was not really a big drive. Didn't do anything offensively. Now we get into the fourth quarter. Second and nine. Bradley out of the shotgun. Running back screen again. Tonka Hemingway slams him to the ground. 
Big man making a big play there now. Third and 11. Bradley out of the shotgun. Another screen to Webb this time. Sherrod Green shedding his blocks. And him and Gilbert Edmond make an excellent play there on the outside. Now first and 10. Doty continues to be in the game. They're going to count the clock down. They're probably going to run it down as much as possible when the clock is ticking. But now 6.42 and remaining as Christian Bill Smith, CBS with a nice six-yard run. Second and four now. Doty out of the shotgun. Wants to throw this time. He's going to hit Jalen Brooks. We don't see him a lot. But that time he's able to run past his defender for 13 yards. Now first and 10. Doty out of the shotgun. He is going to... Look to throw it again, it looks like, if if I'm misreading this play as he continues to count the clock down. Doty takes his nap, wants to throw, intercepted by the linebacker. Luke Doty has very limited time in these games, trying to make the most of it. And A.J. DeShazer is able to make a very, very good read on that pass. Now third and four for this Jaguars offense. They are risking to go three and out again. LaDamian Webb, does he get there? He does. Just barely falling over R.J. Roderick. And now this offense, another third down as the clock continues to click or tick down. Really no pressure on this defense as they go to another screen they haven't worked yet. I don't understand it, but a three-yard loss on the play gives the Gamecocks a chance now to get the ball back. Now second and four to Juju McDowell as we have Colton Gautier in there in the backfield. Three and a half minutes about remain in this game. Colton Gautier continues to stay in the backfield. He's going to dump this one off to McDowell, who makes a nice move there. He's going to get nine yards out of what probably should have been a six-yard reception at most. Now, first and ten, Gautier is going to hit Leggett on the screen. He's got a lot of room up the middle down to the one. How do they not call that a touchdown? I will never know, but on a first and goal, McDowell into the end zone. Maybe would have liked to seen Colton Gautier get a touchdown there, but we're not going to force it as the Gamecocks win this one 42-13. It started out a little slow, kind of like the Charlotte game. We let him hang around a little bit there in that first quarter, but at the end of the day, Spencer Rattler was on fire. A touchdown on the ground and two through the air as the Gamecocks extend their winning streak to four now on the season. Thankfully, we take care of business here on a non-conference matchup against the South Alabama Jaguars. They sit at 1-5 and five on the season, so um, if we lost this game, it would have been a very big upset for them. Spencer Rattler, 16 of 24, 258 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Nothing special, but what you expect from him at this point in the season. He's protected the ball fairly well these last few weeks, and I am happy to say that um, because those first two weeks especially were pretty rough. Colton got to here 2 for 3, 20 yards. Luke Doty, 2 for 3, 12 yards and an interception. Rushing wise, Marshawn Lloyd, 12 for 56 and two touchdowns. We didn't really need to rely on him that much. 6 for 44 and no touchdowns for Beal Smith. Juju McDowell finally got a touchdown, 6 for 21. And Spencer Rattler, also a touchdown on the ground. Receiving wise, Jaheim Bell, 6, 103 and a touchdown, continues to just dominate this receiving core. Juice Wells, 3 for 67 and a touchdown. Everybody else. A pretty average game overall. Defensively, some good plays made. Cam Smith with the tackle. Um, RJ Roderick did have an interception there, I believe, late in the fourth quarter. I don't think you saw it. Um, it wasn't really anything significant, so um, nothing that I felt like really needed to be included. Here we stand. Maybe a chance to be ranked next week once we simulate forward. Um, next episode, you'll probably see. We're sitting at 250 votes. Um, a very good opportunity here because there are a lot of ranked teams that have lost. Um, I mean, you know, Oregon fell all the way down to 24. They've got a chance to lose. Boston College has a chance to lose. Despite moving up, they have a chance to take on number six Clemson, which is probably the game of the week. And that's not to say anything is easy for us going forward. We've definitely got a difficult schedule, but right now, we sit at second in the Eastern Conference or the Eastern side of the SEC. Um, our one loss is to Georgia, who's number one. And we have a chance if Georgia loses something, we have a chance of going to that SEC championship here in year one. That would be very, very exciting. But as far as the, you know, big matchups of the week go, I didn't really see anything absolutely crazy, like no one, two ranking games or anything like that. But there were some actually decent games, as you saw. Clemson and Boston College taking each other on an undefeated 5-0 Boston College in a 4-1 Clemson. And let's see... 
Boston College is going to fall in overtime. That is a tough, tough loss for this BC team. I mean, they've worked hard to get there, um, but unfortunately for them, they were not able to get the win. Going NC State, able to barely squeak by Syracuse. Syracuse, a team that should be much better than 2-4, and four, but for whatever reason, they have just fallen off the face of the planet. Virginia Tech taking on the 20th-ranked Pittsburgh Panthers, and they are going to upset them. That is a big one there for this Virginia Tech Hokie team. I mean, a good upset. You've got to respect it. The Pitt Panthers just not able to get a win. Let's see if Ole Miss can get their first SEC win against Texas A&M. They do not, but they keep it relatively close. Um, nothing too disappointing there if you're an Aggies fan. You know, y'all are used to that type of stuff. Oklahoma State and Houston. Houston was ranked pretty highly at one point. They lost a game, and now they fell out, but they are a barely, just barely not able to win that game. They lose by two points. That is a big, big hit. And probably the game of the week here between Michigan and Penn State. So we will come back to that. We'll simulate Georgia versus Missouri. See if the Tigers have anything in them. They do not. 31-17 is where Georgia wins. And that really hurts because we could have beat Georgia. Uh, but we just played very poorly against them in that game. Especially late in that game. We did not. We we just did not come ready to play. And I'm Obviously, the Huskies came ready to play. They take down the Ducks, and Oregon's out of the top 25 now quickly in this season. They are 3-3 three and three so far. And now we will get into what is the most anticipated matchup of the week. We have the 10th-ranked Michigan Wolverines taking on the 15th-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions. Michigan, technically, they are better in all aspects of the game, but I'd say they're more tied in overall and also defensively they're tied, but their offense is just a little bit better. But so far, I mean, 28 points per game compared to Penn State's 33, 447 total yards of offense for Penn State per game. Penn State's offense has been performing. They've been, you know, um, doing decently, especially defensively as well. Michigan has not been performing as much as, or as well as you would like them to. Um, and Michigan sits... At a pretty nice 3-1 and one record, the Penn State, um, not really any good wins. They have one against Northwestern. UCF is a solid win, but outside of that, nothing too crazy. Michigan did lose to the third-ranked Sooners, so, I mean, that could be why they lost. But they did struggle against Maryland, and let's go ahead and see. Can the Nittany Lions continue their undefeated season? They cannot. Unfortunately, Penn State is not able to get the win. They fall 28-17, to and that is where we will wrap up this week of our college game day experience. Recruiting-wise, no big news. I do need to put these points into somebody before I simulate, so um, I'm not going to make you guys watch that. But recruiting is basically the same as it's been all season long. We did lose out on one guy down here. Um, Steve DeLuca went to Minnesota. That is unfortunate, but nothing that I don't think we can figure out or fix over the next few weeks. Thank you all for continuing to support this series as we head into another very exciting episode next week. And I hope you guys have been enjoying it. If you have, hit the like button and subscribe. And make sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss any of my uploads. As you know, um, it helps you guys get a notification every time I make an upload. So maybe you can watch the videos as soon as they come out. If not, just continue to support this series. I appreciate it so much. And I'll see you guys next time when we take on the Tennessee Volunteers at Tennessee.